Namaskar, hello and welcome back to another episode of War Tales Pirates of Beleriand. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Pirates of Beleriand playthrough where we're looking at the new DLC. Got the first island done. Uh, have already successfully beaten the arena which will now give us greater weapons. I want this island to be explored next but uh, one step at a time. That's kind of the edge. I might as well sail along uh, that edge. There's a lot that we can do here and yeah you can see there is even a unique uh, enemy. All that however comes in time. For now we're going to enter the Balerian uh, tomb and we do have I think a few a few torches so that's all good. It's of course blindly played, so I have no idea what we're getting in, uh, ourselves into. And it's the first tomb in this particular playthrough. Couple of fragments. Okay, let's start on the right hand side. Yellow lightning is what this here is telling us. Anything else? Exploring the left hand side. And one of our characters needs to become a scholar. Just missing grease. A couple more torches would have been nice, but okay, it is what it is. Um, so, you become a scholar for a bit. Besides, wait a second, just double checking. The others, yeah, you're way too far in. You're way too far in. All right, you gotta bite the bullet and you'll become a scholar. in and that and that good putting a bit more of that there And I think this should be it. There we go. Discover the ruined chief. Uh, there is a chest here that we currently cannot open. And no further room. Yellow lightning is the only thing that we know so far. Ruined 
red uh, Triforce, yellow Lightning. Good, we need strong ones. You, and you, and you. Good. Very good so far. Can, can we go further down? We cannot. Going deeper in. Haven't seen a single creeper fight yet. Yeah, just when I mentioned that we haven't seen a single creeper fight. Never mind. Porch on the ground. I wonder if we can just collect these uh, things. That's a cool feature. Certainly not up here. There we go. Finally, more enemies are coming. Took a while. Again, nothing. Well, there we go. A few more uh, reds, but they are not really worth our time. Want more incoming? I think it's time to clean this up. This is a perfect execution uh, execution target for our two-handed fluffy janitor.
lots of extra hits, including this one. Yeah, the more red will die. These fights, compared to the arena fights, of course, are much easier, but you can see there are still a couple of enemies elsewise. The whole thing would have already uh, been done. Yeah, they reworked the darkness, I like it. Everybody now has their own little uh, um, vision, even without carrying a torch. And the extra torches on the ground clearly are good. That's a good uh, new invention. The only thing that I will say uh, that still is a bit uh, weird is there are quite a few enemies and they are very, very spread out. So potentially a little bit uh, tighter map uh, design would be good, Speci specifically since all of uh, the mole rats are really not worth mentioning, right? Yeah. I was hoping that we would get some grease so that we can create more torches, but that is not the case. Blue Triforce. So yellow lightning, red Triforce, blue Triforce. Basin is empty. And we need to turn back two little porches. Just barely made it out with one light available. Good, I'll get us some grease and we co we will continue. Okay, back. So after weaving my magic, I created a lot of torches. We're now definitely well enough equipped to explore the rest of Valerian's tomb. And yeah, as always, if you're playing on hard uh, mode and are not stealing, just the art of gathering things uh, takes a while. Um, in this case, we needed to grind the materials. So, um, if I recall correctly, we ended up here and this had an empty basin. So let's explore a little bit further Uh, that very much. Oh, look at that. Cool. New blueprints. Love to have them. This here very much looks like we need another... We need to fill another basin. Good. Anything else? No. Can't move anywhere. Very good. So, that cock is now turning. 
which tells me something is not okay over here. Let's explore a bit further. Okay, I think this uh, is the second cog which we have now skillfully uh, freed from the tangleweed. I don't know why they didn't collect it and just kept it, but okay, whatever. And we found ourselves a shark tooth. We also learned the stretches. Where exactly is that? Okay. Fatigue generated by rowing is reduced. Uh, okay, I like it. Haven't skilled any of that because we were so, so focused on armor. Ships gains one extra knot when the wind effect is positive. I think that would be good. Ship gains one extra knot when the wind effect is neutral. That's also good. While on sea, the troop eats five less food. Oh, wow. When the wind doesn't completely fill the gauge, a rowing provides additional knots. Winds are displayed more precisely. I would love to get a couple of uh, ship-based stuff, but equally, unfortunately, the way that it currently goes since we started a new playthrough, we just need to get a lot of the basic stuff covered. But for the sake of this playthrough, why not? Let's learn a little bit faster sailing. When the wind is positive, it's really positive. Okay. Good. Turning back. Oh, nice. The door is already open. Uh, we're being watched. And I think it's yet again the Creeper. If not, the Creeper King. Nah, the Creeper King is somewhere else, but the biggest Creeper in town. Good. Positioning ourselves here a little bit closer together would be great. And I should really give you a torch. Moves to here, best friends. And a lot of rats are coming our way. They are here. was not very clever. I was hoping we would find three to four of these little buggers. We didn't. We'll take defensive stance. Just get our delirium stacks up. And uh, of course jump by a creeper. Equip a torch. Thank you. There we go. There we go.
So this small red here will go down. And we're supporting you with light. Okay, we know damn well where all of the enemies are coming from. Might as well, number one, do this. And number two, give me that creeper. I need to grind some money in order to get us the extra skills. Alright, moves to here. Heals burning. Kills this red. Almost kills this red. Well, technically kills it, but it's not yet dead. And there we go. The front line begins to fill up. Oh, this is going to be good. to here one two almost gets them all down and fluffy gender just knocks it out of the park like it Continue gathering stacks. Uh, switching to a tech stance. Very nice. And just a little bit back, I don't want uh, to be burned. I like it. We have a solid position. Moving over here. Bleed, kill, move over, nah, we are backstabbing, there you go. Good, we're almost done. And since I don't want my body here to go down, we're just positioning ourselves in a way that it's okay. Last creeper comes in like a creep. Together with Galvanizing and the Guaranteed Crit, he stood no chance against our team.
like it how they included the automatic uh, pull the torch out free action. I'm sure I'm not the only one who from time to time hated that the torches went out. Good, so that used to be a ballista here. Clearly doesn't work anymore. Can't loot anything. Do anything with the ballista. Loot and more knowledge. I like it. Very fitting. Finding an old tome. An old tomb. That is good. Uh, this is the final room. Turn back. Enter. Is that here for free? Okay, I think that I think that was a mis mistake uh, there. The Saurian swallowed the key. We need someone dexterous enough to get it out. Uh, the one with the highest dex, I suppose, is one gnome who got the golden key and killed the Saurian. Lots of water here. I can only assume that once we let it out of here, that we're going to be fine. But how? How would we do that? Do you think that the door closes? Uh, let's first of all finish uh, this here. We need a scholar. And no one is really. I can't easily give up. I think we're just going to sacrifice the angling because it is, relatively speaking, simple. Good, we had. Triforce, Lightning, Triforce. Got ourselves a little bit more knowledge, which I appreciate. We're going to put that into learning faster, faster sailing. And this should be the final quote unquote fight for the actual, uh, for the actual tomb. Good. How about we start together and how about we start at a location where there is actual light? Hmm? Sounds like a plan. I would say so as well. There is already a rat. Gotcha, you little sneaker. good 
Oh, passes on burning on top of that. You gotta hate it. Okay, trying to get him down. Not as straightforward as I thought, but we finally made it. Don't want to stand right next to someone who's burning, for obvious reasons, duh. Not great. Not great at all. Gotta cover this flank. A lot of uh, people are coming in. Oh, yeah. Straight X to the gut. Love it. Moves to here. Everybody gets orderly. And moves back to here. Just barely not standing adjacent because <clears throat> I don't want to burn. Disconnecting. Moves here. That'll give us enough Valor to play around with. Cure that. Get them all red. <coughs> Hit it well. And yeah, it's almost dead. Unfortunately, almost is not quite dead. And we're passing on the torch with even more burning. Thank you. Good. Getting off into a defensive stance. Couple of hits. Nice. Followed by that. And... We got ourselves two delirium sacks. More enemies come from here. Should have put the main tank on this side. Good. Heal. Into kill. And we're nowhere near being done. You know what? Let's just stand here. There might be something coming. Oh. Moves away from the side. Immediately triggers more and more reds.
Gnome keeps this flank ish. We're unfortunately seeing now more enemies than ever coming from that side. Stupid. I'm getting more delirium. <coughs> Just for the sake of it. Switching to aggressive stance. Almost uh, got him down from 100 to 0. Nearly done. One, two, three. Four. That was it. Okay. Uh, I think that fight will go into uh, will find its place in the history books under the stupidest um, positioning of a tank ever. The most stupid positioning ever. Okay, so in the meantime, minimum repairs to save a couple of tools. Gotta select the miner, and I know exactly the right person for that job. This will give us some sandstone. Gotcha, gotcha. And Treasure of the Ancients is whatever weapon lies in here, I suppose. Learning another rune, and I'm sure the third one might be in that uh, water-filled room. Let's try to solve the puzzle. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Noodle Keeper, you, my friend, become a scholar. Just like that. Sit yourself down. Thank you. And find out what that nice little weapon is. Bookshelf generates a uh, little professional experience doing each rest. Generates um, a little knowledge. Has chance to find fragments of small items during rest. Cool. I like it how they always added something unique to the places so that it matters where you're resting. We're moving out this side and let's just test something. Oh, look at that. Wow, that's fantastic. That's a huge treasure chest. And 
we got uh, the admiral's book on top of it not much else to explore here yeah we're almost done got more blueprints And I think we're done here. The, I didn't have enough light to explore further. So the secret of the last water base and potentially the third Admiral's Codex will need to rest there for a while. But we have been elsewise very, very successful. Uh, got a lot that we can do with it. Primarily, what I am interested in is we could start upgrading our ship because arcadian steel was what we were missing all along and with um, our inability not having a high level miner really that was one of the biggest problems Good, let's, let's check what we need in order to upgrade and whether we can get it. So here's the thing, uh, for starters we need to repair, but that's not a, a big topic. So we could increase our sails or we could increase the actual rowing so this here would just require wooden planks which i just happen to have created a lot of them because you also need them to repair your ship so buckle up buttercup we're just taking a couple of them and let's take a metal plate as well, for good measure. So, we're repairing the ship, cool. And I think we are ready to upgrade the hull. Nice, you have upgraded the flat bottomed hull. Fatigue generated when rowing is now reduced which is great and we got a nice shiny ship so the other option would be hemp and rope and hoists just double checking i think we have a bit of that um, so rope we do have plenty that shouldn't be the problem Hemp, uh, we do have three. Could create a fourth one, couldn't we? Would be enough. We just need that waterproof stuff, which we just so happen to have as well. Created a little extra spare. Good. Is that enough to upgrade? All we need is another hoist, which I think was a tinker item as well. No, <coughs> it was a smithing item. It was a smithing item. All right, what do we need? Or a hoist. 
we got everything available. And a couple of metal plates wouldn't be bad either. Uh, what do we need it for metal plates? Because then I create a few spare ones. Just iron ore. Okay, and a bit of coal, which we can generate ourselves. Now, all we need is a place where we can actually smith and I think that was over here so land there and upgrade the ship cool we're going to do that I've since learned how to use the winds the current sail that we're rocking is very good if you're if you're um, running perpendicular to uh, to the winds, not very good when the wind is coming from the front or from the back. By the way, this fishing <clears throat> is a bit OP. Good. We're creating a little bit more coal. Just burn a bit of the woods. And we should be fine. Like it how there are even whales. Okay, so the idea is we're going to get there. Let me do that real quick. And uh, we're seeing how the upgrade ship looks like. Hey, so after a bit of collecting, I finally got all of the material together. And we're now officially improving our sails. We got the improved square sails with three knots and tailwind. We got uh, less fatigue when we are rowing and I also upgraded the Arcadian steel ram which will give us a less damage in collisions which is good because we don't need to repair as often and 20% of the enemies start with imbalance. We're um, currently at 1600 so Lordran is already hot on our heels and we're climbing the ranks as freebooters. The only thing that I also wanted to show you is, number one, how fast the ship uh, now is going when in the wind. Look at that, we're pretty fast. Oh wow, two, four, six, seven knots. I also created a outpost here in Strong Camp which will allow us uh, to do uh, to do quick travels. Um, I think our next task will be to actually progress the storyline a little bit further, because we already know something, and the only thing that we needed was a proper a proper ram on our ship, which, uh, as you can tell by now, we have installed. And look at that, how fast we are com uh, compared to the other ships. Granted, if we're not in wind, it's not as great, but yeah, we're, we're really, really fast. Those ship upgrades and the learned upgrades uh, pay dividends. <clears throat> Let's take another look here. <coughs> 
Ship can be retrieved from the do uh, dock for a cost of thrones depending on the distance. Oh, that's not bad. That's actually not bad. Um, when the wind doesn't completely fill the gouge, rowing provides additional knots. That's good. Wind's more di uh, displayed better, and I think we don't need food for this year. That's great, because everything that allows us to travel faster will be helpful. Good. On a final note, as I'm ending today's uh, session, we're going to rest one last time, because that's all we need for the scholar to, uh, to understand the legendary item that we have gotten and we got ourselves Enlil's Great Axe. Wow, couldn't be happier. Uh, is uh, that a two-handed axe? I think it is. Let's double check that real quick and before we're um, doing anything else these small items might not be too bad. Oh yeah, I remember these uh, things. There we go, got the first one. No. And got the second one. Okay, cool. So that's three knowledge points. Shouldn't scoff at them. Let's get the ship and let's also learn that more precise wind calculation. I like it. Good, got all of the ship upgrades, um, and now let's take a look at our weapon. Which could be a side grade. So, of course this one is a little bit uh, uh, higher, and deals damage to units in the area, also applies bloodshed, and bloodshed was always good. This here, ignore the damage uh, for now, um, has Endel's Punishment. Deals 30 damage to all units in the area and gains one fervor, uh, fervor for every stack, which um, fervor increases the damage by 10%. Hmm. I think in longer fights, this here would be awesome. It's a great axe, don't get me wrong. The bloodshed in itself is also good because it is uh, damage that directly goes to the health. Can't be <clears throat> bypassed in any other way. I think they are on, uh, funnily enough, they are on equal uh, footing. They are just as good. That's Currently I don't have the money to upgrade it, so... Let's not pretend we had uh, we were rich and had the money. Now that is not the case. Good. Anyways, next time we're continuing with the clear and empty inventory. I think we managed very well to upgrade our ship, which is fantastic. And yeah, the team is looking strong as ever. Uh, we do, we're do. level 7, almost on our way to level 8, uh, which is good for this playthrough. It is fitting. And look at that, we still have about two-thirds to be explored. Uh, mm, definitely want to uh, uh, do uh, the quest line here. Definitely want to get up the pirate ranks. And, of course, do the, those har harder fights and explore the other islands. So, yep, we're 
uh, on the right track. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoy the content, leave a comment and a like down below. And see you on the next episode of War Tales Pirates of Valerian. Bye bye.